So students arrive this weekend? So they arrive this weekend for orientation on Friday. How's that? How, what are you feeling? I'm excited. So last year we had students on campus, but we didn't gather in groups in the same way that we had historically. So community was really different. We were in smaller groups based on New York State um, parameters. But this year we are going to welcome them in a new way. Masks, of course, inside, but together. So we have events planned with the entire student body, convocation, kickoff for faculty and staff. Tomorrow I'm going to go meet the student leaders that have been here since this weekend and preparing for the fall. So just being together will be a difference in a sense because we weren't able to do that in the same way that we always have. What has it been like to lead a college through a pandemic? Challenging. <laughs> um, I think, you know, the, the phrase that I've used is that it, Leading in a pandemic is all about judgment calls. And you know, you're always looking as a leader for the right answer or the best decision at that time. Really judgment calls is what it's been about. So things are changing all the time. You know, there's the, the New York State regulations that have come out, Monroe County, CDC, and you're always adjusting to little parts of that. I think as a leader, how you bring those decisions and those mandates to your community, to a group of faculty, staff, and students who want to be together is probably the most challenging. So no one's really happy in, these in this season, right, um, with the decisions you make, but you have to make the best decisions you can and use the best judgment you can in those moments. So it's challenging. You're relatively new to Rochester and Roberts Wesleyan. Yes. What has your impression been thus far? So I love Rochester. So I had no idea. I came from California. When I arrived in Rochester, I was so excited about the history about the work that's been done over the years here. So every weekend, my husband and I, we made a decision to go do an activity that was just Rochester. So whether that was High Falls or we went to the museum, the Eastman Museum or the Museum of Play, or we walked around Letchworth, we just did something different to understand. Um, one of the things I love is the history that Frederick Douglass walked these roads and, and fought uh, for equal rights for people, that Susan B. Anthony cast her first vote here. Those align with the founding of our college. Our founder, B.T. Roberts, was a minister who actually was an abolitionist that believed that women should be ordained uh, in the church, which is still controversial today in some places. And that was at the same exact time that Susan B. and Frederick Douglass were fighting and advocating the way they were. Only we were doing it out here on the, on the west side of Rochester in a different way. And so I think that part of the city uh, has been really inspiring for me. I know we have challenges, clearly we have challenges, but I think if we continue to look back at our roots and the advocacy that we have had for people in our community, I think we can even um, move forward in a way to advance the work here. The people are great. The philanthropic work is unbelievable. The way in which the community believes in education, believes in caring for each other, uh, is really inspirational. And then, of course, you know, you have the Jell-O Museum, and you have, you know, ragu spaghetti sauce and Kodak, and these things that I had no idea that were from our area, which are just fun, factual pieces to, to get to know. Abbott's ice cream. Roberts yes. Wesleyan is known for its criminal justice, yes. its law enforcement training. How has that changed in the past year to five years? Right. One of the things that we are focused on now is really um, how do we use the motto of the institution, which is education for character, which goes beyond how you do work, but goes into how you see community in each other. So restorative justice is one of the things that we are starting to really lean into in our criminal justice program, but that goes beyond criminal justice. It looks at social work, it looks at psychology. Even in our new Golisano Community Engagement Center, we have an institute called Intellectual and Spiritual Humility, and it looks at what does it mean to bring a community together that's polarized? How do I listen? How do I hear? How do I come to a conversation to learn and even figure out that I might have some things wrong because of how I approach somebody? And that goes back to our founding 156 years ago. It is about how we engage in the community and take 
for us a spiritual component of what that looks like, our education, and put that into practice. You initially studied music. You were going to be a composer, yeah. pianist. You did percussion in the orchestra. You thought you were going to be a music teacher, mm -hmm. and now you're leading Roberts Wesleyan. Right. How did that happen? Maybe I'm kind of conducting still, right? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit conducting the institution. Well, you know, I graduated um, from my undergraduate program, and I was approached and asked if I would be interested in being an admissions counselor at my alma mater. And the amazing thing about that is I loved it. I loved the opportunity to talk about how education transformed my life. I was a first generation college student. My father only went through 10th grade. Education was not in our family language at all. Um, I was supposed to graduate, get married, get a job, and do the best that I could. And I was fortunate that my father uh, remarried uh, and my stepmother had worked as a secretary at an institution. And she came into the family and said, of course you're going to college. And it really changed everything. And so I selected a four-year university, much like Roberts in California, and it just changed everything. I had no idea what it meant, one, to integrate your faith into your education, what it meant to learn from faculty that took time to get to know you, those that really walked alongside me to say, okay, Dina, you may not have this figured out, but here's some things you need to learn about yourself if you're going to be successful in this world. And so I was able to share that as an admissions counselor, and I was fairly successful at it, and so I had opportunity, and I stayed in Christian higher education um, until today. And so I spent 26 years working in California at my alma mater, and then I came to Roberts in Northeastern. And the reason we came, why would you, you know, people ask me all the time, why would you leave California? Why would you leave your alma mater? Because I really saw the opportunity to make a difference in this community and to fulfill what I believe is my call, which is to bring hope and vision and clarity to communities on how to move forward and make a difference in the world around them. How does a school like Roberts Wesleyan commingle religion and yeah. academia? I love to say that we graduate students who know how to connect their head, their education, to their heart, their spiritual formation, and engage their hands in service to others. And it's all three of those that really matter. So students that come here, they may or may not have a faith, but our goal is to help them understand that we are all created in a space that there is a spiritual component to who we are. And to us, that faith component is really important because you can have all the education in the world, but if you don't have the heart of which, uh, uh, that could be a servant heart on how to serve others, it's really hard to engage in a way that makes a difference. And so for us, that's unique. And we have students, again, from all backgrounds that attend Roberts, but our commitment is that we're gonna talk about what it means to find your identity in Christ and what that might look like. One of the more exciting aspects that is happening right now, the Golisano yes. Community Engagement Center. The Golisano Community Engagement Center really has been a dream of the campus for over 100 years. Uh, and that sounds crazy because you're like, well, wait a minute, I thought this was innovative for today. Well, half the building is a student space. We have never had a student space where students could go and interface with the faculty and the staff in a larger venue. So half of this building is that. The other half is a training area where we are launching the community institutes at Roberts Wesleyan College. We have a Justice and Security Institute, a Business Solutions Institute, Intellectual and Spiritual Humility, Westside Psychological Services, and English Language Institute. And the idea came when I asked 10 business leaders from Rochester to meet me and give a day and tell me what their companies needed and what Roberts might be able to provide for them. And what they said was we need for our small to mid-sized companies some training and we need somebody that will come in and meet us where our need is and bring expertise. And so being an educational institution, we knew we had some expertise to offer, and we knew that we were able to possibly coordinate this in a way that could meet the needs of the companies. So that expanded, and we said, wow, in this building, let's put both of those. So you have your students, you have businesses from outside of the campus that are in Rochester, 
You have the career services department that are that sets up our internships. We have our 72 corporate partners that we already have as part of our strategic initiative. And those groups will come together in a way to help businesses locally, help workforce development locally, but also engage our students in a way that they can come face to face with what's happening in Rochester. And that's really where the building came from. And it came from these 10 executives that spoke into that, um, along with the need we had. Tom Golisano gave us the largest gift in the history of the college, $7.5 million. And so we are in a campaign now to move to 15 million. We broke ground and we're doing something different with this campaign. The fundraising is to build the building, of course. But there are also some funds in there to endow the building so that it has the resources needed to continue it beyond our generation and into the future. Is there anything else you'd like to add that I might have missed? Well, we are the only NCAA Division II athletic scholarship program in the, Rochester, in the greater Rochester area. And last year we were just blessed to have five conference titles. And one of those conference titles uh, uh, was held by our women's lacrosse team who went to the NCAA Division II Final Four. And so very proud of them and very excited about this year's athletic season and just representing not just Roberts, but Rochester in the way in which we travel and um, compete.